Hello you absolute legends. Something truly amazing has happened. A moment in time that will go down as one of the greatest in all of speedrunning history. At the very end of January, seven of the greatest Super Mario 64 speedrunners from all around the world were flown to Sweden for a three-day head-to-head competition to break the existing 120 Star World record. On the line was the biggest cash prize this niche has ever seen. If someone bested the competition with a time better than 1 hour and 39 minutes, they could take home a total of $12,500. This had all the makings of something magical, but if I am being honest, the possibility of someone actually pulling it off seemed too low for high hopes. This was a task that each of the speedrunners had already spent months or years trying to complete in the comfort of their own home. Live events and marathons are notoriously difficult to perform well in. The greatest speedruns usually take hundreds or thousands of attempts, so allocating a few days to break a record isn't a recipe for success. On top of that, with the added spotlight the event brings, it increases the pressure dramatically. But against all odds, something magical did happen. On the 1st of February, the speedrunner known as Cheese collected 120 stars and finished Super Mario 64 in a time of 1 hour, 38 minutes and 54 seconds. And he did it live in front of over 10,000 viewers. It is an incredible achievement, and beyond that marks an important step in the evolution of speedrunning into a more legitimate form of professional competition. In this video we will cover the lead up to this epic gaming moment. We will discover why it is so special, and ponder what it means for the future of speedrunning. I hope you enjoy. On the 30th of March 2019, a Reddit user by the name of FBomb2F made a post titled $4,000 N64 SM64 120 star verified world record bounty. It's outlined a $4,000 prize for the person who held the verified record on the 31st of December 2019. This was a pretty massive deal at the time, and was the largest bounty ever put up for a speedrunning record. This motivated a lot of the top Mario runners to grind 120 star to try and win the cash. But the favourite by far was the runner Cheese. He already held the record at the time with a 139.19 and appeared to be fully capable and poised to take it much lower. He had been on 138 pace multiple times already, as early as 2018, these insane runs failing only to miss Bowser throws right at the very end. He couldn't rest on his laurels though, and other runners definitely had potential to snatch the record especially the runner Punkation, who was the record holder for many years and is regarded as one of the all-time greatest players. He was less than 20 seconds behind with a run set back in 2017, and a lot of things had been learnt since then, paving the way for a huge possible time gain. But unfortunately for the other runners, it seemed as though Cheese had all but sealed the deal when he achieved a time of 138.51 on the 4th of August. There was just one problem. During a star in Jolly Roger Bay, his capture card crashed, dropping both audio and video signals. It took over 30 seconds to get anything back on screen, which, as far as verification was concerned, nullified the run. It still appeared on the top of the speedrun.com leaderboards, but it was listed as unverified. Aside from being a nasty eyesore on the ranks, it also meant that the run was ineligible for the $4,000 bounty, as it required a verified run. The run was still a huge milestone for the community, being the first time a run had been finished in a time of better than 1 hour and 39 minutes, but it was disappointing to see that the run couldn't be fully acknowledged. As 2019 progressed, it was still seemingly more and more inevitable that Cheese would win the bounty, as no one else was close. But a lot can happen over the course of 9 months, and people weren't sure if the bounty was still even up for grabs. Questions started to be raised about the status of the $4,000 prize, and it was Cheese himself who broke the news that due to a worsening financial position, FBomb2F was no longer able to put up the money. So I should probably share that news, but I've officially spoken one-on-one -on -one to the guy who initially created the bounty, uh, the guy FBomb, who, who was the one who actually created the bounty and said that he would give oh, um, the $4,000. Um, he said that the bounty is not a thing anymore. RIP. The bounty is not happening. It's official. It's official the bounty is not happening. Fortunately, this is not where the story ends. In early December, the YouTuber EasyScape uploaded a video announcing that he was putting up $1,000 himself for a new bounty. But there was more. 
On the 5th of December, the Reddit user Chatham2 created a Reddit post stating that he would sponsor the bounty, the full $4,000. Obviously, seeing as the community had just been burned, people were skeptical. But he did actually come through with the goods, even sending Easyscape a check for the full amount in advance for safekeeping. But again, there was more. On the same day, Ballistics Gaming created a post advising that they would sponsor the bounty for $5,000. Given the source, this offer seemed a lot more credible. In total, $10,000 was put up for grabs and a new bounty was born. This prize was slightly different than the previous offering though, with it being available immediately. All someone needed to do was get a verified 138 first, and the prize would be awarded. They wouldn't be getting the full $10,000 though, as the prize would be split 5 ways. 5,000 to the winner, 2,000 for the person holding the second fastest time, and $1,000 for the next 3 runner-ups. This was already the largest prize for a speedrunning competition in history, but again, it didn't stop there. On the 26th of December, the European Speedrunner Assembly announced a weekend-long Super Mario 64 competition. This would take place at the end of January 2020, and would comprise of seven of the best 120-star runners. The players who would be flown out to Sweden were Cheese, Punkation, Targo, Paracusia, Liam Kings, D Whatever, and Simply. The winner would collect a cool $2,500. But this wasn't the only cash prize up for grabs. If anyone beat the existing verified record, which at the time was 139.05 by Punkation, they would collect another $5,000. This meant that if a runner achieved a 138 live at the event, it would mean a total cash payout of $12,500 with all of the bounties and prizes combined. Of course, the odds of this actually happening were pretty low. In the entire history of the game, only a single 138 had ever been achieved. We are talking about an accumulated total of tens of thousands of hours of playtime to produce one run quick enough. Not only that, but the setup the players would be using was different than their regular rig. Speedrunners of classic consoles almost universally use CRT TVs. This is because the conversion from analog output signal to digital, which modern TVs use, creates a delay in the image appearing on screen. This is called input lag, and describes the time it takes for a controller input to produce feedback on the TV screen. The older CRTs have the lowest amount of input lag, making them ideal for high precision play. In Break the Record, which was the name of the event, the players would be using digital monitors. Thankfully, they were able to minimize the input lag significantly though. These days, there are various technical solutions to achieve this pretty successfully. Still, it's not as good, and the players needed to adjust quickly. The competition itself was exciting though, and even the prospect of someone taking home $2,000 for first place was enough to attract a decently sized audience, with a consistent viewership of over 10,000 spectators. Unlike other marathons or races where players had one shot, the runners in Break the Record had the entirety of the day to get in as many attempts as they could. By the end of the first day, it was Cheese who held the lead with a 139.49. This was the only run better than a 140 for any competitor. Day 1 wasn't the best indicator of everyone's true potential however, as players were still getting used to the new environment, and the new equipment. Day 2 is where things started to really heat up. 4 hours into Day 2, Cheese finished a run in 1 hour, 39 minutes and 21 seconds. While this didn't break the existing record, it was remarkable because the second half of the run was the fastest ever recorded in a 120 star completion. Cheese was admittedly sleep deprived, having barely slept the night before. He was also dealing with a stomach flu, but he was determined and more focused than ever. Four hours later, Cheese began a new run. Truth be told, it wasn't the most polished run. Cheese's fatigue was causing some costly errors. By the time he had collected 66 stars and entered Dyro Dyro Docks, he was just barely behind the pace of the 139.21 he'd achieved hours earlier. But then something magical started to happen. Chi started playing out of his mind. Ten minutes later, heading through the second key door into the upstairs sections, he was 47 seconds ahead. Five minutes later, he was a full minute ahead. A minute is a long time, but in Super Mario 64, especially in the later stages, a single mistake can wipe out that lead entirely. Until the run is over, it can end at any time. And this isn't an exaggeration. 
Keep in mind also that he was racing against the fastest finish ever recorded, so he still had to play very well to maintain his advantage. A mistake in Tiny Huge Island cost 15 seconds, bringing the lead down to 46 seconds. The next few stages kept him more or less in line, but a sloppy tick-tock clock lowered the margin again to 29 seconds. From here, Cheese could afford no more major mistakes or time losses. With the lead he had been able to maintain if everything went well, he would still be able to barely finish under 139. Rainbow Ride, the final stage and one of the most anxiety-inducing. Here, almost every conceivable mistake results in Mario's death, killing the run. Though in this case, Cheese kept it together and barring a couple of minor mishaps, played the level commendably well. With 119 stars collected, all that was left was to make it through the final Bowser stage, collect 8 red coins and face off against Bowser. With only several seconds to spare, a missed Bowser throw, a single fall, would eliminate any chance of 138. And on the 1st of February 2020, with 12,000 onlookers, Cheese did this. Oh, beautiful. Straight into the speed kick there. Could be Yachty Cycle. Nice. Oh, that's fine. He's platforms today, man. <laughs> Getting everyone. Oh, and the speed kick. Beautiful. Yeah, showing some confidence. Let's go, Cheese. Yeah. Nice. Nice. He's going for the safety. He, he kind of had to, the cycle was kind of bad there. He's coming down the throws. Alrighty, nice. let's go. Throws. Oh my god. Let's go, cheese. Oh my That's god! It, the Cheese, you're a legend! You are a legend, Cheese! Oh my god, you are a legend! Holy. Oh my. Dude, my heart was beating. I'm gonna stay here to just be a little bit professional, but dang, Cheese. Dang. Dang. What a legend. Dude, I can imagine the happiness right now. Against all odds, it actually happened. With this run, Cheese regained the verified 120-star world record and collected a grand prize of $12,500. Truly, one of the greatest moments in speedrunning history, and in my opinion, the most clutch speedrun we have ever seen. The Break the Record event was by all metrics a huge success, and has likely ushered in a new age of professional speedrunning. The commentary was on point, the layout was superb and easy to follow, and the large viewership makes the investment from future sponsors an easy decision. We are probably going to see a lot more events crop up like this in the future, or at least, I hope we do. Speedrunning needs to be taken out of bedrooms and into the real world as much as possible if the hobby is ever going to be taken seriously. Live competition separates the pros from the amateurs. In the comfort of your own home, talent can get you pretty far, but in events such as this, other attributes become increasingly important. Confidence, attitude, strategy, perseverance, and adaptability will make or break a performance. And in this realm, it seems as though Cheese is undoubtedly the king. Now, speaking of Cheese, he's currently trying to build up his YouTube channel, so please do me a favor and go and subscribe to his channel. He uploads a ton of fun and interesting content. Again, thank you for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.